coconuts are not allowed in check-in bags in case you guys are wondering. Welcome to India, everyone. Today, we're flying the new feeling with Vistara on their longest route from Mumbai to London Heathrow. And we're doing it in business class on what is, without question, India's sexiest 787. And an endangered species at that. With the Air India Vistara merger, it's only a matter of time before the iconic Vistara star ceases to exist. So sit back, relax, grab your cup of masala chai, and let's see what India's most premium full-service carrier has to offer, from the seat, to the lounge, to the food, in-flight service, and, yep, you guessed it, the loo with the view. Flying, it just feels new again, with Vistara. Welcome to Mumbai Airport. Mumbai Airport is the second busiest in India after Delhi and handled almost 52 million passengers in 2023. We're departing from Terminal 2 today, the airport's main international terminal, which is a stunning structure spanning 105 hectares, a third of the size of New York's Central Park. This thing is spacious. It's a lot of roof. A lot of territory, certainly not going to be claustrophobic in here. The terminal is home to upwards of 40 airlines, so locating your particular airline's check-in desk can be a challenge, but luckily Vistar has a hub here, so it wasn't too hard to find. Oh, also, in case you haven't noticed, I'm traveling with the old man today, which made the trip a whole lot more fun, but more on that later. Uh, London. Thank you. Nope. As soon as our bags were taken care of, we were given our boarding passes as well as lounge invitations. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, bag drop complete. And I could already tell this is gonna be a special journey. Uh, pretty quick and efficient. We were the only people online at the time. Really friendly agent, um, pretty smooth. It is now coming up on 1240-ish. Uh, boarding is at 145 for a 245 flight. They gave us a little access tickets for the Adani Lounge. I've never heard of. Pardon my ignorance, guys. I should have known. Adani is one of the largest private companies in India, and they actually own 75% of Mumbai Airport. Now, typically, lounges not run by the airlines themselves aren't as good, but spoiler alert, I think this one's going to be an exception. Uh, security has been quite the operation, to say the least. Um, that took about a half hour. Guys, if you're traveling through Indian airports, be prepared to take literally everything out of your bag before it goes through the x-ray machine. Anyways, after security and a quick passport check, we were left with around 30 minutes to check out the Adani Lounge. All right, passport control out of the way. Passing through the uh, emporium of perfumes and cigarettes and alcohol. I'm gonna abstain from all that today, fortunately. It sounds like a parrot. Is there a parrot in here? Anyways, there are two Adani lounges apparently. There's a west one and an east one. So we're gonna check out the west one. The <laughs> and another rookie move. Apparently our ticket only gives us access to the east lounge. So we got turned away from west and had to retrace our steps. Okay. Just straight across the food court, take a left from McDonald's. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, how are you? Good, sir. How are you doing? Doing well, thank you. No announcements inside the lounge. Screens are there for reference. Okay. Welcome. This is a very cool lounge, you guys. In fact, a sleeper pick for best business class lounge I've ever been to. It just felt luxurious in a uniquely Indian sort of way. And it checked all the boxes in terms of food and drink options, featuring a fridge full of Parlay Agro products, a tea and coffee station, multiple bars, and a delicious buffet with all the staples, including masalas, curries, mergs, tikas, fruits, desserts, you name it. <laughs> they were also offering a free 15-minute foot massage. My dad and I opted to stuff our faces with food instead, since we were already pressed for time. While we stuffed our faces, we were treated to great views of this Air India A320 pulling into gate 47. We also popped open the laptops to pre-purchase our Vistara in-flight Wi-Fi, as the airline had advised us that we would be unable to do so in flight. Thank you. All right, that was a fairly no-nonsense visit to the lounge. Didn't have much time. Just grabbed a um, very hasty bite to eat. Now headed on to the gate. Gate 71 was a bit of a hike as it's basically at the end of the International Pier, but it was nice to get some steps in and just take in the sights and sounds of Mumbai Airport before our long flight to Britain. This is the last and final departure call for all passengers traveling on Air India flight 179 to San Francisco, where is your disco? All passengers are requested to board the aircraft immediately through gate 66. <laughs> wow, that is not a short walk from the lounge. 
but we are hauling it. Already started boarding. Definitely not afraid we're gonna miss it or anything, but still would like to board like fairly early, so let's do it. And yeah, that didn't happen because as soon as we got to the gate, the streamliner had me hypnotized. But it was this 30 year old retro jet that sort of stole the show. After I was done being enthralled by the tarmac action, it was time to get on board Victor Tango Tango Sierra Delta, the very first 787 delivered to Vistara back in Feb 2020, and one of six in the fleet today. Hello. Hello. Thank you. The great views only got better as we made our way towards the dedicated jet bridge for business class passengers. All right, you excited? Oh, the anticipation building. Oh, I'm <laughs> Hello. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Look at that. And since we boarded via door L1, there was no choice but to turn right. And pretty soon we found ourselves in Vistara's 30 seat business class cabin. I made my way to 5 Alpha while Pops made his way to 7 Alpha. The first thing I noticed is that the ambiance was very carefully curated. All the window shades were darkened and my eyes and ears were soothed by the combination of soft purple mood lighting and relaxing music. Adding to the spa vibe was this pair of Vistara slippers, no robe though, as well as a pillow and some blankets. This is the tried and true Stelia Aerospace Symphony seat, the same one found on Turkish Airlines as well as Singapore Airlines in their regional business class cabin. It's of course a lie flat seat with a good amount of privacy and adequate storage, but has a couple drawbacks which we'll explore later. Uh, no, I'm okay. You don't have champagne, do you? Uh, after takeoff, yes. After takeoff, okay. Yeah. Thank you. So that was the menu card delivery. Then after that, we got a water bottle yes, and then Thank a you. cold towel. Thank you. Cold towel delivery. Pretty soon it was time to strap in and get going. But first, let's get the stats for today's flight from our captain. This is Joel Joy Alvina. On behalf of my crew, I would like to welcome all of you on a flight to Star 015 to London Heathrow. The flight time today is 9 hours 42 minutes. We invite you to enjoy the new feature of flying on the Star. Thank you. At around 2.50, we pushed back and commenced our roughly 10 minute taxi over to runway 27. I'm sorry, what? If resisting the urge was that easy, wouldn't everyone do it? But hey, I guess it must work for some people. Go take off stations, please, thank you. Pretty spectacular takeoff on a crystal clear day in Mumbai. We took off westbound, so we only needed a gentle right turn to get on course. The first part of our journey would take us over Iran, then we'd pass over Turkey and the Black Sea before re entering Europe over Romania. Most of our journey would be spent at 34,000 and 36,000 feet. Before the service started, it was time to take the Wi Fi for a quick test drive. Business class and Club B Star Platinum members get 50 megabytes for free, and all Club B Star members get free messaging throughout the flight. But if you don't fall in one of those buckets, there are three tiers as shown here. My dad and I opted for the stream package, which was steep at 36 bucks, but it basically forced us to zone in and be productive throughout the flight. <laughs> all right, let's get to the service. Around 30 minutes after takeoff, the crew came around with drinks and some lukewarm nuts. Nuts are good. Very adequately salted. Yep. After I had some time to munch on those, the awesome flight attendant working mile asked me if I still wanted that champagne, and that just isn't something you say no to. 
I wasn't going to order a champagne, but I did mention to them that I was potentially craving one before uh, before departure, and they proactively came up and asked me if I wanted one. So fortunately, I uh, I can't turn that down. If it's a yes, no question. It's going to have to be a yes. Hey, Mr. Jim. Uh, yes, please. And what was your name, by the way? Okay. Thank you for asking about the champagne. <laughs> I almost forgot. <laughs> you reminded me. In case you need a refill, just let me know. Okay, I'm good for now, but thank you. Okay, you're Thank you. But, uh, you want uh, the champagne? Uh, not for now. All right, we've got what looks like the uh, the whole meal here on one tray. Tandoori chicken, which is really, really well presented. The other options were a uh, chicken parmesan, an angier passanda, or a roasted squash and chickpea steak, but I think I definitely chose the right one. The chicken was tremendously tender and spiced to perfection. That was impeccable. Then on the side, we had some curd, creamy yellow lentils, basil-infused curried exotic vegetables, and that beetroot salad. Had pretty much all the flavors and textures covered. Spicy, sweet, crunchy, chewy, creamy, and chunky, and definitely one of the better airplane meals I've ever had. And it was light enough that when the dessert cart came around, I wasn't already in a coma. The dried fruit mawa roll seemed like the most authentic Indian option, and it looked amazing, so that's what I went with. But that's not all. We of course had to try the fruit as well to balance things out. And it did not disappoint, especially the dragon fruit, which I don't think I've ever seen on a plane before. <laughs> I did not want that meal to end, but sadly it did, and we still had 8 hours left to go. First order of business was a trip to the lab. Let's see what this lab has to offer. Not a ton, pretty much your standard Dreamliner lab with one standout feature, which you'll see in a second. This is the one back of the business class cabin. We got a marquee feature in this one that is... Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. And they even give you the option, in addition to dimming, you can also close if you don't trust the dimming process. If you think you're going to get spied on midair. I like that extra security blanket. We got mouthwash, hand sanitizer, a little bit of lotion, and conventional soap. And I believe a faucet that's supposed to be motion activated. It says motion activated. I'm not getting anything though. Code hooks, code hook number two, the obligatory smoke detector. I'd hate to tamper with that. Nice full length mirror. And let's get out of here. Upon returning to 5 Alpha, it was time to set up the makeshift office in the sky. Alright, so we've ordered an espresso to, to uh, supercharge the day here. 11 19 a.m. London time. So, an espresso is definitely still in the cards. It's early enough in the day. Probably doesn't get in until 7 p.m. Over in, uh, over in Britain, so hopefully it won't screw with our sleep. Thank you. <laughs> and just like that, the elixir of life, aka an Illy Espresso. Definitely not as good as an espresso on the ground, but it did the trick. After a couple hours of solid work, it's time to go exploring. The economy cabin looked just about as nice as they come these days. Big, high-res screens, what looks to be fairly comfy seats, and according to the airline, generous legroom. And it was pretty much 100% full, which was nice to see, especially given that Vistar isn't exactly the easiest airline to book. Now, up until recently, Vistar was the only airline with a premium economy cabin, and today they still boast about being India's first true long-haul premium economy product. And fares seemed pretty competitive for the random dates I searched. All right, back on board UK-15, let's take the lie flat bed for a quick test drive. This thing converts into a six foot four inch bed and a little mattress topper was provided, though I think the seat itself has plenty of padding. Oh, all right, this is my view. So when you're in that lie flat position, this little cocoon provides a good amount of privacy, even in those odd numbered rows, a little closer to the aisle. The flat bed POV, it's got like a sort of like suede feel to it. Although the footwell is a little bit tight. So that's the bed for you. And just FYI, the light vest is located in a pouch underneath the seat. Oh, hello. Uh, can I do the chicken, please? Thank you so much. Let's see what Mr. 7 Alpha got. He's basically a vegan who eats the occasional piece of fish, so none of these are great options for him. What did you order? I got the vegetarian. I mean, this thing's going to be terrible. 
he says that about pretty much every airline dish and that it typically ends up being better than he expects. Let's see if the same is true for these chicken skewers I got. Uh, thank you. And there we go, meal number two. And not quite exactly what I was envisioning. I mean, the chicken skewers are more like sausages and this chickpea pocket seems like the main event. However, it smelled amazing and tasted amazing, especially the beetroot patties, and it certainly wasn't lacking in volume. And I washed it down with what was probably my 17th cup of soda water on this flight. Ah, tremendous. That's the best dish in the house. <laughs> yes, hell yes. <laughs> yes. I'll just get this one up. All right, thank you. <laughs> the crew very generously hooked me up with some fruit since they had some extra, and I was ecstatic to get one last hit of that jackfruit before landing in rainy London. With about an hour to go, I snuck in a quick cup of tea, which seemed appropriate given the two countries we were traveling between. Then it was time to get ready for landing. We'd be doing two laps in the Lamborn stack before setting up for a right base into runway 27 left. Ground crew secure, cabins for landing. Alright, as we're making our way over to Terminal 3 via Taxiways Echo and Bravo, let's take a moment to reflect on the Vistara experience. Now, when Tata and Singapore Airlines first launched Vistara back in 2015, they had pretty big ambitions to redefine air travel in India. We are creating a truly world-class airline and bringing together the best that both SIA and Tata have to offer. And they've done pretty well for themselves, <laughs> probably a function of one, offering a truly differentiated product, and two, their competition just being dated and dysfunctional. In terms of my experience, Vistara delivered in pretty much every category. Ground game, yep. Seat, not industry leading, but definitely competitive. Food, top notch and plenty of it. And punctuality, no delays and baggage was delivered promptly. Now, service wise, this is where I had the highest expectations given the Singapore Airlines lineage. And it certainly didn't disappoint. The crew was clearly well trained and they seemed to enjoy their jobs. But aside from the champagne delivery, they just weren't as proactive as I was expecting. For example, they pretty much disappeared in between the two meal services, so every time I needed a refill on my soda water, I had to either ring my call bell or head up to the galley. However, all my interactions with them were very positive, and they even wrote me a little thank you note at the end of the flight, which was an awesome touch. In terms of ticket price, this flight set me back around 1600 bucks, which is approaching the upper limit of how much I'd pay for an international business class ticket, but probably a fair value in today's day and age for an almost 10 hour transcontinental flight in a respectable business class. Plus, Vistara's days are numbered, so I wanted to try them out before they were absorbed by Air India. Thank you so much, excellent flight. I appreciate it, have a good one. And that's a wrap on the Vistara experience. Man, that was awesome. And as we're passing this flight connection sign, it's probably a good time to mention that if you live in North America or Europe, Flying Vistar may not be very practical. First off, their long haul route network is pretty limited. They only serve three destinations in Europe and none in North America. They aren't part of any major alliances, making earning and redeeming award miles a little more difficult, and it's just kind of unlikely you'll come across them unless you proactively seek them out. However, as an av geek, it was a unique and special experience, and I hope you enjoyed flying the new feeling with me. But until next time, I wish you the safest and happiest of travels wherever your journeys may take you, and stay tuned for more adventures on wide bodies, new and old, as well as general musings on the fascinating world of commercial aviation. Sayonara from London Heathrow. <laughs>